Hello and welcome to another episode of Copper Bottomed, the show all about copper. Uh, I've not done it for a couple of weeks because I've been traveling around and doing some other stuff. Um, <clears throat> but here we are. I'm recording on the 16th of February 2024. And it's been pretty uh, hectic in the market. Um, lots of metal prices have come down. Copper prices have held up pretty well. I've just taken this um, snapshot of the copper price uh, today, $3.80 per pound. I mean, it's been as low as $3.70 in the last week or so. So um, it's a pretty remarkable uh, a bit of stability in the copper price. And some of the kind of the, the, the trader chat yesterday, and this came out, copper continues to remain under pressure as the market demands more easing measures from China. What's next? This is kind of a copper technical analysis. And it is under pressure, and yet prices stay relatively high. And, and I think that's a function of the, the tightness in the market, that it's, it's, it's pretty hard to, to supply into the copper market. Um, what else has been uh, out there in terms of news? Well, while I was away, I've been in Chile. Um, there was kind of quite a, a splash about uh, cobalt metals that came out, came out in the news. Actually, it's not that new. I mean, um, cobalt have been talking about this asset for months now. Uh, this is a Reuters headline, headline from 2020, uh, September last year. Um, <clears throat> and Mingomba is 247 million tons of ore with an average grade of 3.64% copper, which is a fantastic asset. Um, it's worth noting, however, that it's a private company and there's very little information on it. So if you go to the Cobalt uh, website, you can find nothing about it. We don't know how deep it is. We don't know the uh, technical details at all. Uh, and it, It's very close to um, Concola which is right on a major aquifer. So there's all kinds of water issues. Uh, congratulations to the team for finding the, um, the the deposit, but it's very hard for anybody outside to know what's going on because it's a private company. I was contacted um, by a viewer who said, could I talk about American West Metals, um, an Australian company uh, that has published a resource. And so I will do that because that's really quite interesting. Logo down here, Fitzroy Minerals. One of the things I was doing in Chile is I'm, um, I've just become um, the CEO of Fitzroy Minerals, which is a copper and gold explorer. We've got a couple of projects in Chile. Um, in due course, I will talk about the <laughs> the technical details of the work that I'm doing out there. But um, until then. I feel free to look at the website and read about the projects, but I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of other companies. Um, and we're going to start off with American West, which published at the end of January, it's maiden mineral resource estimate at the Storm Project in Canada. Aussie company, um, sorry, that's that, sh that should be then um, an um, Aussie dollars, 13 cents in Australian and a market cap of $55 million Australian. So around kind of, um, what's that? Forty million dollars US. It's slightly the share price and valuation doesn't necessarily reflect this copper asset because they've got an advanced gold indium project uh, in the states as well. I suspect, however, that this is going to be the the main project going forward. It's much easier to sell a uh, or to market <clears throat> a copper project than it is to market a. Um, uh, an indium project, and I have spoken about the the, the exploration results from this before, um, principally because they've got a Canadian partner who's got a car carried kind of twenty percent interest in this project. But it's a remarkable asset. It's way up in Nunavut. Um, I don't know what the logistics are, but I should imagine that it's very expensive exploration and it's got a very short operating season. Despite that, they have found shallow uh, strata bound uh, copper at good grades close to surface and it looks as if it's going to grow so let's just have a quick look at this um, this jork resource um, the maiden um, indicated inferred mineral resource estimate 17 million tons 1.2 percent copper a little bit of um, silver for 205,000 tons of copper metal kind of um, the, the the metal content um, in situ that's a really good start. 
by itself, it's probably not enough to stimulate um, an asset, this um, a development of a mine this far north. But there are so many new discoveries in this area, and it's open in so many directions. I think that that is going to grow. So I think this is a really, really good bit of first work. Um, uh, it's fresh chalcosite dominant copper sulfide. Chalcosite um, is leachable. It's 80% uh, copper content. It's in Canada. It's got growth and upside potential. It's open in all directions. Uh, they've also picked out other uh, potential resource target areas during the course of 2023 at a place like Thunder. That's a great intersection, 49 meters at 3% copper. Lightning Ridge, 15 meters at 2.3% copper and 15 meters at 2.1%. That's also good. And Cyclone North, um, almost 8 meters at 1%. You know, it's an emerging camp, belt scale. I really like it. Um, despite the challenges of um, the weather and the latitude. So it'll be interesting to see how the company communicates what it's going to be doing. Uh, I'd like to see what its um, financial plans are and also what are its plans for what I think is a problematic um, indium asset in the States. It's not problematic because I don't like the project. It's just indium's really, really hard um, and it's 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 such a niche metal it's probably not suited to a single asset or a kind of an exploration development company you kind of want to have that valuable asset into a, a company which has got a bigger balance sheet and so it can um take more of a kind of market risk on a on a, on a metal like that but anyway um so that is american west uh i like it yeah that's good right Onto the drilling highlights, um, I've got a set of reports from the 29th of January and a set of reports from the 3rd of February. There has been another week that's come out, but I'm just going to, um, I don't want to overcrowd this episode. Quite a lot of these companies are quite small, um, and I will group them together in a kind of a, um, just kind of a, a one slide commentary. But uh, we start off with Philo Corp, then we move on to Surge, who appears twice. So I've kind of concatenated those two. Um, Hercules Silver, Copper Fox, Corix, Trigon, Probe, um, Arizona Sonoran, um, Amarok, T2, um, and Kalanex are the ones I speak about there. And then we've got Xanadu, Benton, Hot Chili, Barksdale, and Emerita to cover here. So let's get on with it. Right. Philo. Philo, Philo, Philo. I mean... What an amazing company, brilliant team. You've got the mighty Lundin um, Mining and the, kind of the, their family and that whole investor group behind them. Um, <clears throat> the market capitalization is $2.7 billion. So in a sense, this is already an elephant and it's very hard to get an elephant to gallop. Um, you know, we'd gone from um, acorns to oak trees or mouse to elephant you know that's where you've had the uplift it's now in that tricky phase it's still showing exploration growth so so the the, the mineralization is uh the envelope is still expanding um and these are just quite extraordinary holds you know you've got one and a half kilometers more or less at 0.61 percent copper equivalent so fantastic um and jamie Bre beck the president says uh, holds 93 and 94 highlight the exec exceptional potential we have to grow the deposit it's true uh, increasing the envelope of mineralization but when you look at the cross sections here i mean these are all deep uh these are going to be block caving targets it is phenomenal it will be a mine at some stage but um i think Block caving is a really, really difficult method, and very few people uh, are skilled at doing it. There are some block caves uh, uh, around the world that are in production, and in fact, there are lots of um, block caves in Chile. Chile is the place where there are the most block caves, so there is expertise in country. Um, however, it's got a very high failure rate, probably around twenty-five percent to thirty-five percent failure rate on the on the on the block cave. And the crucial thing about block caves is that you never really know whether they're going to work until you've spent uh, years studying them and years and billions of dollars building out the 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 um, the mine infrastructure and you only know whether it's going to work 
kind of later on in that process. So um, lots of headaches and lots of risk with uh, Block Cave. Lots of copper here and a fantastic team. However, the market capitalization is $2.7 billion. And, you know, as you are uh, looking for exploration upside, it's much less likely that this goes to $10 billion or $5 billion um, than a smaller company uh, can get that uh, multiple. So as I said, it's hard to make an elephant gallop, but if you like riding an elephant, this is one for you. Right, um, down to the other end of the scale, here's Surge Copper. They've put out two news releases within a, um, a fortnight. Um, that share price says, uh, hey, we're all excited about this new copper project. And then it says, oh, actually, maybe this isn't quite as good as we hoped. So the share price shows great excitement about a revamped copper project and then gradual kind of the the death of hope, the, the, the realization that perhaps this isn't going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread and the share price kind of tends to give it all the way back. So what do we got? In the first headline, we had 500... 48 meters at 0.36% copper equivalent, um, which is actually 0.28% copper, a little bit of molly, and a tiny bit of gold. And then the next one was 418 meters at, again, 0.38% copper, presumably a, a copper at a point, sub 0.3. Yeah. And um, if you look at the cross sections, this is the cross section for the first week, and it's a hole down this side of, a, of the Berg stock. And there's a bit of mineralization through there. And then the, the, the next week is the mineralization down the other side of the Berg stock. And it's all rather low grade. And people ask me, I, I've, I've had comments back saying, why am I down on the BC porphyries? And the answer is, is that the BC porphyries are pretty low grade. And then they say, well, hang on, there are mines operating in BC with low grade, such as, I don't know, Mount Milligan or um, a bunch of other mines. And my answer to that is yes, but the starter pits and the average grade at the beginning was enough to pay back the capital. So now they may be mining low grade material, but they should have paid back the capital. Whereas when you uh, start off with something low grade in a high cost environment where your steel and your energy um, is, is high cost, you're never going to pay back your capital. So um, and, and the other crucial thing is that if you're looking at something which is, let's say, average grade 0.3 copper and 0.3 gold, to get an average grade of that, you need an awful lot of intersections a lot higher than that because you're going to get an awful lot which are lower than that because that's the average grade. So to come out with your best drill holes saying, hey, we've got um, our best drill hole is the average grade of um, a low grade porphyry it doesn't cut it. And what you're seeing here, for example, with search copper and a market capitalization of $18 million versus an NPV of um, $2.1 billion. And it says, um, here we go, we've got a base case IRR at a PEA level of 20%. But then you look at the pre-production capex of $2 billion. And what this is telling you is that the market doesn't think that this is economic. So, um, and I certainly don't want to discourage exploration, but Surge, to get the market excited, needs to find some high-grade material. And it's not easy. Uh, and that is why uh, the copper market is supply constrained, because it's really, really hard to find good-grade copper um, at surface. So um, onwards and upwards, Surge. Go and find some, if you can. Um, keep at it. Right, here's a company that is finding some pretty de decent mineralization close to surface. That is Hercules Silver, the market capitalization around 178 million Canadian. Um, they've just put out uh, 460 meters at 0.4. Um, that's the, uh, the, the grade meters. Um, and that's over here, um, 461 meters at 0.4% copper. And I like the fact that they didn't include the the molly, so you have, this is a true copper intercept. Um, and they've got this lovely map over here showing where their drill holes are, and it's a increasing grade to the northwest. Now, interestingly, the market doesn't really seem to like 
the kind of recent grades, or rather, it's just it, it gave up a lot of value, um, and it's come back to this what I think is a more reasonable level. And I like the way that they work. Um, they talk about whole twenty six confirms increasing copper grades to the west, um, and it's drilled into the new Leviathan porphyry. I like the name Leviathan it implies um, large scale and kind of monstrous um, something from the deep. Moby Dick. And their headlines here are they've got 500 meters by 450 meters. Um, the new assay data in the deep penetrating 3D IP suggests the potential early porphyry center may underlie the entire mapped exposure of the Hercules Rhylite. So that's good. It shows an arcuate shaped chargeability target that closely follows the trend of the Hercules Rhylite and roots into a vertical anomaly with coincident high conductivity and low resistivity, which may be the feeder area. And they're planning a 20,000 meter um, drill program this year. So uh, really exciting. Uh, we need more of these. This is good. Um, I think it's going to be a, a fun ride during 2024. Right, on to Copper Fox. It's a huge news release. It's really, really kind of long and wordy. Um, I think the, the 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 key point is that if you look at the share price here, the, again, a few years ago, people got excited about the potential. Uh, it's a 2021 PEA, and then you're into the long, you're into the weeds of doing the technical work. This is kind of very wordy uh, technical stuff. I think perhaps the the, the most salient point um, is that, you know, they're talking about geotechnical drilling to augment the geotechnical information for the Shaft Creek deposit to support an updated open pit mine plan and pit slope stability model. It's, it's, it's quite hard going. Um, and if you look here, the after tax NPV and internal rate of return of 13% at a PEA level, it, you, you know it's hard going. You know it's hard going. And look at that copper grade, 0.265% and uh, 0.16 gold. Oof. Uh, so it's really hard. And, and, and again, here, you've got a kind of an NPV of around a billion dollars in a market cap, uh, less than tenth of that. So it's kind of the market saying, oh, we need something different here. We need, uh, there has to be a, uh, step change in grade or capex or processing for this to get credibility or gain traction. So um, hard yards, I'm afraid, ahead for copper fox minerals. I can't see what the catalysts are there. Right, another one. Corex Copper, $14 million market capitalization. Uh, they've got the Habe uh, deposit in Namibia. It's famously low grade. It's been looked at by every man and his grandson um, right back from the 1960s and 70s. Um, if you look at the, uh, from the presentation, the, the resource is at 0.31% copper and they've got 3 billion tons of this stuff. Um, and they've done some kind of infill drilling. And they're saying, uh, we're extremely enthusiastic about the recent results from our drill program. They show that the Habe copper deposit has been seriously underestimated by previous operators. Previous work estimated an average of 0.31% copper, while recent drilling work has shown 0.4 to 2% of extensions up to 200 meters. I, I wonder if that's true. If that if that is a game changer, they've got to redrill the whole thing. But remember that to get an average of 0.31 you need to have lots of high-grade intersections. So I, I question whether this is a game-changer. Um, I don't know if uh, many of you know um, David Hall, a um, fabulous geologist who sadly died last year. I remember him telling me that their, one of their holes that he um, drilled into a project in Turkey was 250 meters at two and a half grams. And the average grade of that deposit actually um, ended up being sub one gram. So you need to have these big intersections of higher grades to carry the big intersections of lower grades so that you get an overall um, resource grade that is uh, something like 416 million tons at 0.31%. So um, next, right, Trigon Metals, $38 million market cap. They are restarting the combat mine up in um, kind of north central Namibia. I've been up here. It's a beautiful part of the world. It's quite challenging. I mean, look, um, so this is an aerial photograph which shows where they are 
um, where their drill holes have been, these intercepts. And look how close these are. This is the size of a car, and this is the size of a tree. You know, these are very, very close spaced um, projects. The, the, the mine plan here is to ship concentrates. So you can't really concentrate oxide material. And a lot of, if you go through the photographs when you look at these intercepts, a lot of them are in oxide. So, um, and also look at these azimuths. So this one is 306, that's kind of off to the northwest. Uh, 92, that's off to the east. Uh, 329, that's almost due north. Um, 82, that's come to the northeast. So these are kind of all in different directions. Um, they've got some superb grade. I expect this is um, structurally very challenging. So you're dealing with small pods and they're dewatering and they're trying to, they're, they're doing the open pit and going underground. Um, they talk about uh, as they bring this into production, the, the, the production levels will rise and the costs will decline. I note that they've only got $5 million of cash. So I think this is kind of squeaky bum time for Trigon Metals as they go from exploration into development. So uh, watch the balance sheet very, very carefully on this. Um, but there's copper here. There's de definitely copper here. But um, good luck. This is this is a critical phase, or as, as they say in, um, if you've ever done any kind of the, of the walking in the Pyrenees, they kind of say, passage difficile. Um, but anyway, here we go. Right, on to Probe Gold. Uh, these guys are exploring for gold up in uh, the Detour area of Quebec. Uh, they've hit some um, copper mineralization, 1% uh, over 9 meters, and um, I think that was from the, um, I think, earlier. So, so that was the first one, and this was the second one here. 0.13% um, copper over 345 meters. They're exploring for gold. They've got um, sniffs of copper and metal in here. Um, they've got a superb market capitalization, but I wouldn't back it on this copper stuff. So hopefully that's being supported by um, gold projects elsewhere. Right, next, Arizona Sonoran. These are busy bees. They keep putting out news releases, and um, the most recent one showed uh, 321 meters of point. 2% total copper from 45 meters depth. That's pretty low grade, but it does show con continuity of mineralization. So I'm going to kind of park it. If you look at the, um, that obviously didn't impress the market. The share price is kind of on a downward trend, but they've got a real asset and it's in a workable place and they've got a um, mine infrastructure. And so I think that perhaps the, the subsequent uh, news release, that was on the 25th of January, but the subsequent news release from January the 30th is perhaps the most interesting one, or the more interesting one. Um, and this is their, their work plan for 2024. So they're going to be working on a technical study, a standalone PFS, and initiate an amended PFS which incorporates um, mineralization from Mainspring. And then they're going to integrate the Newton, which is the... Um, the leaching of the sulfides with Rio Tinto's proprietary technology. And then if that's the case, Newton chooses to exercise his option, then they can um, buy in at a 0.65 multiple of the NPV included in the amended PFS and get 40% of the project. So um, there's a possibility that they will get a kind of a cash payment. So that is potentially there for 2024. So that's got to be some kind of degree of um, optionality that will come into the share price at some point. But let's look at the um, the PFS. That's going to come in the first quarter and we are halfway through the first quarter. So that's coming soon. Um, and then the feasibility study is going to be 15 months away. We're looking at June 2025. So there's a lot of, lot of um, uh, work to do in in between they're going to be drilling infill to inferred um there's metallurgy that they're doing the heat leach amenability for mainspring and parts park salia and permitting so that you know there's a lot of this kind of boring technical work that is important and i think that that newton option payment would be a huge um endorsement of the company having said that newton is kind of not the, the hydro 
metallurgy of sulfides is re relatively well known, and I'm not a believer in the kind of the miracle of these kind of secret and patented processing kind of um, developments. I don't think they're revolutionary. I think they're evolutionary, and they have to work on a site specific basis, and they have to work on a case specific basis. And um, if you look at the reviews done by the some of the universities in Chile on the leaching um, hydrometallurgical advances, it's basically said that they don't really change things very much. So I'd be very surprised, pleasantly surprised, if Newton provides a step change in the recoveries on the um, on the sulfides, because you've still got to get the the um, reagents into the into active contact. You need to kind of the chemically active copper touching the chemically active reagents, and that is the tricky bit. Um, so anyway, the Newton work plans are drilling um, an, an infill to assess the, the sulfide potential, and then a PEA on that processing of that sulfide material. So that when you talk about metallurgy, they're looking at the primary material from both Mainspring and Cactus West, tested in small columns to evaluate optimum Newton operating conditions. Lots to look out for. I'm not going to hold my breath on Newton because um, I think it's evolution, not revolution, but it does have that optionality which it could um, you know, seriously endorse um, Arizona Snoran. There we go. Right. Um, a whole bunch of smaller companies, Stamper Oil & Gas, $1 million market cap, Decade Resources, $4 million, Commander 3, Velocity 21, um, Infinitum, $1 million. Look at these share prices, very blocky, all coming down. I think uh, kind of not yet in terms of their, their their copper intercepts. Commander is quite interesting. It's just sold um, its royalty portfolio for four million dollars US. So they've got some cash. So um, and look, they just drilled 140 meters of incredibly low grade. Um, let's see what they do with the cash. Hopefully, they won't uh, go and drill more of those kinds of holes. Right. Um, here's an interesting company, Amarok. $340 million market capitalization. And look at that share price chart. It's phenomenal. What a what a result to get in the last few years. They are Greenland-based. They've got the kind of the, the, the proper uh website, they've got the proper management team. Um and I'm not convinced uh by the geology. But um, I know James Gilbertson, he's a superb geologist and a really, really top guy. Um I think I worked with them about 20 years ago on a project. But there we go. Um, so they're, they're, they're drilling Sava, which is a new South Greenland copper district. And they hit copper mineralization from surface. And they indicate the existence of a new 120 kilometer long copper district in South Greenland. I mean, woo, woo, woo. But then you go and look at the grades. And it's kind of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Here we go. Uh, 1.9, that's great, but it's only over 0.8 of a meter, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and you think, oh, really? This isn't necessarily the greatest thing since sliced bread. And remember, operating in Greenland is expensive. Um, I think a lot of this price run is on the back of the Nanoluk gold redevelopment. I had a quick look at it. It's narrow. It's rugged. It's almost impossible to get to one single vein they've just found another vein i would not be chasing this one this looks like a anyway i'm not going to be too rude but um it's, this certainly is not for me right um when i was going through the list of small companies uh with micro market capitalizations to kind of not talk about yet i was about to put t2 metals in there but then i had a look at the results and then i looked at the management team yeah i had a look at the results and i had a look at the uh, management team and the results are pretty exciting or pretty interesting so t2 metals reports high grade polymetallic drill results at its sheridan vm8 vhms project manitoba near surface high grade intersections 9.3 million meters at 3.1 percent copper equivalent and then you look at the map and it's kind of um somewhere very cold in canada cold lake lost lake these names are pretty um forbidding and they're chasing, um, they're chasing uh, these volcanic hosted massive sulfides, and you can see at Cold Lake they got 
just under six meters at um, one and a bit percent copper, one and a bit percent zinc, bit of sil a bit of gold, and a bit of silver um, from 35 meters. And again, 1.8 percent copper, one and a half percent zinc, two grams gold, a bit of silver. Nice. You come to Lost Lake down here, and it seems to be um, slightly more zinc rich. So 0.9 percent copper. 2.6% zinc, half gram gold, 3% uh, copper, but 6% zinc, 2 grams gold, 0.9 and 3.84. So more zinc rich down here, but still interesting. And Mark Saxon, I'm, I've known Mark for many years. He's a good geologist, um, really sensible guy. He comes with a good team. Um, and I like what they say. They say, we're pleased with these first drill results from the Sheridan drilling program. They've never seen mineralization in core before. Informative, it is. Particular note of the high gold grades. So um, probably due to improved analytical methods, methods versus past explorers. We feel confident that our ongoing exploration can improve the size and grade of the Cold Lake and Lost Lake historic resources. So, at, you know, at a market capitalization of $4 million, there's a lot of optionality in here. So I like that. Jim Pickle said, "I he says, basically, I've found lots of this stuff here, and I like this team. And from what I've seen, I'm optimistic. I like this one. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I'm not saying this just because I, I know Mark. I haven't spoken to him about it. But just kind of looking at the team, looking at the, the, the grades and the potential and the market capitalization, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. So there we go. Um, right. Kalanex, another huge news release that they put out. Market capitalization stubbornly around twenty-seven uh, million dollars. They are targeting the Descendant in a hundred and twenty-five meter step out of the Pine Bay, and Descendant is this kind of anomaly in here beneath the cabin zone. They've gone down. I mean, this is from fifteen hundred meters to sixteen hundred meters deep. These these holes. Uh, they're hitting it. Kalanex is a strange one because it feels real. You know, the asset feels real. Um, it's interesting that Max has chosen this time to allow Jim Pickle to speak because he hasn't. He normally just controls the narrative. And uh, Max is an extraordinary guy. He really knows his stuff. And he's good on the technical, even though he's not a technical guy. But here we go. We have Jim Pickle saying... Um, although the rainbow and descendant have many similar geological and mineralogical features, what sets them apart is the much larger stratigraphic footwall VMS feeder alteration system, which is possibly eight to ten times larger with descendant versus the rainbow deposit. And this descendant associated footwall, footwall alteration package is spectacular, big surface footprint. It's inspired and eluded previous explorers who also believe that this extra large alteration system was spatially associated with a correspondingly large to giant VMS deposit. Now, they've got the secret source here of doing downhole um, EM, which has been a really important guide. Um, and he's talking that the elevated and uh, silver and zinc grades in, appear to be similar to the near surface distal. Uh, lower grade portions of the rainbow deposit that rapidly transition into thicker, higher grade copper dominated massive sulfides at depth, closer to its proximal alteration feeder pipe. So they're still looking, they're still going to go deep. So that means it's going to be a bit more expensive and a bit more drilling, but um, they're hopeful. And this is what exploration is about. So I continue to like the kind of the technical approach of these guys, even though I understand the market hasn't uh, fallen in love with it. Maybe a deep hole into the guts of something like this would turn around the trans transform the the trajectory of that share price. I hope so. On to the second week. So here we go. Zana do mines. I've previously spoken about this company and I previously kind of slightly dismissed it because a lot of the economics go with Zijin because um, Kamaktai uh, Zijin have got seventy five percent or eighty percent of the economics. However, when I looked at it this time, I thought that actually maybe um, there is some value here. You know, they've got a market capitaliz of, um, capitalization of $77 million. I looked at their presentation. Um, it's a big resource. They're doing 
serious work. They've got uh, proper contractors on site. It's actually uh, making progress. It's got a kind of a post-tax MPV um, and a 20% IRR, which goes some way to underpinning this. And there's some optionality as well in the rest of the uh, portfolio. So um, I felt that next time I would look a little bit more closely at um, uh, Xanadu. I'm, I, I, I'm still not sure yet what's going to kick it out and make it kind of an independent standalone project. Um, but I, I, I wasn't so quick to write it off this time. So um, I'm, there, there's some hope. Right. Benton, our old friends at Benton, still no cross sections. I, I, I wrote to Stephen Stairs. He sent me a, um, a cross section, um, which he, they're going to publish soon. Um, but my goodness, the results still come, just keep coming through. So here we go. Holds 18, 20, 21, and 22, and hold 19 is in here as well. Um, and even 19, which didn't make it into the highlights, is still okay. 4% copper over 8 meters, 3 over 17, almost 6% over 24. That's a banger. Hold 21, which is here. Um, hold 22 is 3.6 over 22 meters. Also superb. Where's 22? Here it is. So really, really good work. President and CEO Stephen Stairs stated, this has been the most successful drill campaign in the history of our company, delivering exceptional grades and thicknesses. Our team is excited about the future of this excellent project and our ability to expand the deposit. I like unchallenging uh, market capitalization. Hopefully, I'll meet Stephen at some stage at the PDAC. Um, hopefully, they'll publish the uh, <laughs> cross-section soon. Uh, this slide is getting too busy, too much information, although I do quite like it. It's, it's quite good fun. Right, um, onwards and upwards. Barksdale. Market capitalization of $24 million. The share price going that way, which isn't um, particularly helpful. Uh, it's in Mexico. This is looks like an open pit target. The Mexicans are kind of talking about banning open pit mining. I can understand why the share price is taking a beating. Um, it's mixed between a bit of gold at the top and a bit of um, copper at the bottom. Uh, Rick Trotman, the president and CEO, says... Um, we look forward to continuing to push this asset forward. Maybe maybe your shareholders uh, are also looking forward to a plan on how to deal with Mexico and the lack of open pit mining. So tricky, tricky times. Right. Um, the last one, Emerita Resources. And this is interesting because they really had a big run up and they've given a lot of that value back, but they've still got a market capitalization of $96 million. They recently put out um, Iberian West um, mineral resource updates on three deposits, uh, La Infanta, La Romanera, and El Cura, the princess, the the, the Roman, and the priest. I th I mean, where did they put out the resources? I think it was on um, the, well, maybe La Infanta and La Romanera. But the market didn't like the resource. It was deemed to be low-grade and probably sub-economic. Um, and this news release tells you something, okay? So Emerita provides initial drill, drill results from El Cura, from the priest. But what they don't do is put any numbers in there. And then in the front paragraph, they don't put any numbers. And then they go into this huge section about the background, they go to the big section about the exploration work, and even in the results, they don't talk about the numbers. So obviously the numbers are not that exciting. And when you come to the significant intercepts, you can see that the numbers are not that exciting. So um, the, the widths and the grades don't um, get the heart racing for all the right reasons. Um, so it's, it's, it, this is kind of an interesting thing that this is what companies do when they're a little bit shy about their results. They don't include the numbers anywhere. It's really easy to see and they don't talk about the numbers, but they do put them in the table. So obviously, uh, Emerita are disappointed by the drilling at um, El Cura, despite what they say. So now they're looking at, we can now target more effectively areas where higher grade mineralization may occur. Yeah, basically, they're still on the hunt. Um, good market capitalization for what they've got. Um, hopefully they've got some cash and they can hit it hard. There we go. That is it for this week. It's been a bit of a, a roller coaster ride, a bit of a gallop. 
uh, I will uh, try and catch up from the with the news releases from the whatever it is the tenth of February, um, and um, get get that out as well soon. But uh, keep going, copper explorers. Keep going, copper investors. I know it's a tough time, but the copper price is holding up. And remember, assets which are uh, near surface, simple metallurgy, and decent grade will trade at a premium. So keep your eyes focused for those. And I'm certainly on the hunt with um, Fitzroy Minerals. And uh, thank you for your time. It's goodbye for now.